Hi everyone, today I'm here to do my June wrap up. In June, <coughs> I'm dying. In June, it was the Make Your Myth Take a Readathon, where you could basically follow a path and become a character from like a fantasy based setting. My original TBR had eight books on it, and I read 17 and a half in June. I will explain the half later, but basically, because I finished my original path I can now give myself my little crown. I had this turn up the other day and it was open and my mum was like why have you got a crown and I'm like I just really want a crown so I'm gonna wear it now but it's squeezing my head already so we're gonna see how long it actually lasts for. It's it's a it's a look. Yeah so in June I read 17 books and I read half of one more that I finished this morning and I read 5,967 pages for all the books I finished plus 148 from that other book. I got four books from the library, I listened to four audiobooks, I read two books physically, 11 books, uh, what's the word, on my phone, <laughs> on a Kindle, on my Kindle, my Kindle's behind me. I read 11 books on here, I read one graphic novel, three novellas, and really enjoyed my month. I had such a fantastic month in June. I loved every book bar two, and they were disappointed. We will come to those later. But because I have so many, I'm just going to start because this video is already going to be long. I can feel it. The first book I read and finished was For the Prompt to read a Queen main character. And so for that, I read Matilda, Empress Queen Warrior by Catherine Hanley. This is a non-fiction book about a woman who was meant to be queen but didn't actually become queen because this is in the 12th century and women are terrible. You can't do anything as a woman but actually Matilda fought her whole life to be on the throne. She was rightfully meant to be queen. The king had named her his successor but a man just happened to be there first and took over and once he was in charge everyone was like yeah get him and so she spent literally her whole life fighting to get that thrown back and oh, it was such an interesting book I rated it four and a half stars because it was a really interesting book and it wasn't too dense as a non-fiction book I have a fear of non-fiction because I'm always scared they're going to be really boring but actually it wasn't the only boring bit was when you were just reading about all the men and it was frustrating when you were reading about all the men because you're like this is a woman's story but you have to read the men's story to read her story like in the introduction her it talks about what was on her tombstone and it said great by birth greater by marriage greatest in her offspring here lies the daughter wife and mother of henry and it was written by her son and it says in the introduction but the rather patronizing description of matilda as a daughter wife and mother commits the all too common error of defining a man only by the men around her and the whole book was like that the whole book had to define matilda by the men she was surrounded by and it was it was so so interesting i loved it i loved her she's amazing we should all learn more about her and what was amazing was the fact that had her campaign been a success history would have been so different not just for women well for women or it would have been interesting if it actually would have been like whether it was just this one woman and we would have just brushed it to the side but i don't know it just it's it begs begs thinking about and yeah but the women in this despite being told by all of society that they're useless weren't actually they were really important figures in their own history there was one other queen or well, the actual queen at the time was also called matilda it's really confusing and her this matilda and queen matilda were far from passive in their own battle and actually they did a lot of the defining moments in battle and yeah it was just really good ah. <laughs> thank you um no <laughs> Next, no, please don't lay on that. I need that. The next book I read was The Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics by Olivia Waite. I read this for the prompt to read the royal colours on the cover, and that is because 
the two women in the cover are wearing red or one of them's wearing red it's a very red cover and this was about a woman called Lucy I think she's called Lucy who wants to become an astronomer but can't because that's like a male kind of area of being again lots of feminist books from me and she goes to London to this female benefactor called Catherine who funds her adventures in science she's now sat on my foot and it's also an LGBT plus romance I thought this book was incredible I rated it five stars I was blown away by it I didn't expect to love it as much I just thought it's a romance I don't like romance but actually I really enjoyed it and I think I really enjoyed it because it wasn't only romance it was a romance that happened in a society it was the kind of regency era where women weren't celebrated so the two women in it were constantly fighting for their own rights and they weren't just fighting for it in a men's world so one of them is fighting to become recognized as a fellow in this society and so obviously finding her place in a male centric world but the other is trying to be judged fairly by doing something feminine and being judged as it being a worthwhile art form rather than just a feminine thing to kind of pass the time and I just I thought it was really interesting seeing them together but not seeing them kind of in competition with each other one wasn't better than the other they just happened to exist and it was just so good and also I really want one of Catherine's dresses and that little plot twist at the end so good I really enjoyed it the next book I read was Hear the World Entire by Anne Wenkaya Hayward I rated this one three stars it was a I got hair in my mouth. A, <laughs> a short story retelling of Matusa giving her a voice. So it's based in a cave, like she lives in a cave and gets visited by Perseus, who tries to persuade her to leave. And while she's talking to him, she's also looking back on the life she's led. She doesn't know how long she's been in this cave. She doesn't know how long she's been alone. And it was really interesting to hear about. It was also kind of heartbreaking because she's been alone and you get happy because she's got a friend now, but also you're like, is he actually a friend or is he, is he just like playing her? And I was happy to see her get a bit of joy, but I was sad to see it show short because I felt like we were only just getting into her story as the, as the book began. But I was glad to see her have a story because Medusa is just like this villain and in this she's a hurt and like really upset and lonely person and yeah it was sad to read and also very short to read so if you want to read a bit more about Greek mythology check that out. The next book I finished was The Court of Miracles by Kessa Grant. At this point I started going off piece so my original plan was to do the Queen and the Witch Path and this one was a prompt on the night path, I think, to save someone. And I rated this one three and a half stars. I started it in May. Yeah, that was a month before. I started this in May, but got 20% of the way in and then just kind of put it down and had no desire to pick it back up. And I was like, uh, I've got I've got like an advanced copy I really should read it and then I worked out that it wouldn't be advanced anymore because I'd missed the release date so I thought I really should read that and you know what actually once I got into it I really enjoyed it if I haven't already said I rated it three and a half stars I couldn't rate it higher despite really enjoying the end I really enjoyed the relationship between the sisters I enjoyed the fact that the romance wasn't huge it was like hinted at but the family relationships were put at the centre and like the romance would have washed it away so I was glad it wasn't involved but I couldn't rate it any higher really than four stars because it just the beginning I couldn't get through but anyway this is a six of crows meets Les Mis meets the jungle book set in 18th 18th 19th century Paris in the French Revolution it's involves a prison break and this girl called Nina who wants to save and look after her sister Etty and it's like the underground of Paris where all the thieves and beggars and murderers live and yeah it was really interesting the world was really rich the characters were interesting the 
plots and heists and plans were amazing and Nina wasn't white which I loved like I'm really bad at visualizing people so I don't know if I miss it a lot of the time this crown's growing on me actually I don't know if I miss it a lot of the time but there was a line where it's like how she noticed she was the only non-white person and I just I really enjoyed her I thought she was great and I just loved the fact that she was like romance no Next, I read The Goddess of the Hunt by Shelby Eileen. I read this for, again, the night prompt to read a weapon on the cover, a book with a weapon on the cover because it's got Artemis with a bow and arrow. I rated this one three stars. It was a really interesting look at the arrow ace spectrum. It was interesting to see how it's perceived because everyone expects you to laugh and you expect that of yourself. It's mostly told from Artemis but there was a bit from Aphrodite and she's like is complaining about why she doesn't fall in love and Aphrodite says I don't bring people together because they need to be completed you are a goddess whole Artemis. Trust me to know this love happens to some people but it does not have to happen to you. I just thought that was oh, so good. Artemis doesn't immediately kind of feel comfortable in this sexuality and I think it's really interesting to see her journey and see the other people around her that accept her like they also speak to Leto I, well, I say they I don't know who's the narrator they also speak to Leto who is her mother and she says there is so much more to a child than their mother's traits and their father's mistakes and I thought she was also a really interesting character next I finished A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mars. I rated this four stars and I love this a lot more than I expected this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling but with fairies and basically a girl called Feyre accidentally kills a fairy and gets taken to the fairy court as punishment and I was kind of expecting to feel a bit eh about it because I knew that romance was a big thing and that sometimes the romance kind of took over the plot I think because the romance was the main point of this it made sense like it didn't seem like it was taken over the whole point was to fall in love and I thought that was well done I didn't love the characters but I really enjoyed the world and I thought how the Beauty and the Beast retelling was done was done really well but also why does everyone growl like that's something I don't understand I also don't understand how you do it like to, to, oh. <laughs> to just talk with a husky voice I was gonna try and do it but I can't do it do you just talk with a husky voice or do you like that's not sexy or maybe I just don't think it's sexy oh I read the court of thorns and roses for the prompt of host favorite because Ashley loves that book the next book I read was the final book for the queen path which was to reread a favorite and that is the flat share by Beth O'Leary I love it's about these two people that share a bed and a flat but never meet and then fall in love through like post-it notes and little notes and it's just so cute. I rated it five stars of course because I knew I would because it was a favourite because it was a reread and it's just so me and sad like Tiffy's so me, Leon is so sad and how they fall in love is so us and how they treat each other is just so us and it's a book that makes me physically react like I smile I laugh I shouted at it I wanted to like throw it across the room a few times but it just really effectively invests me in the book and also what is a romance it's like more a book with two single people that are on their own paths that happen to fall in love in the middle and I just think it's really well done and it deals with some really important themes like emotional abuse and it's really well done and oh, I just you should all read it I love it I know some people don't and I know some people don't like particularly in Leon's narrative but I think it's effectively done because it shows you their different voices and it tells you who's speaking and it's just very him and I think it makes sense the it's hurting now it's like really squashing my head the next book I read was The Devouring Grey by Kristen Lynn Herman this was the replacement book I chose for the witch prompt occult themes because there are tarot cards in it and kind of magical witchcraft basically it's about a town where this this beast and there are four founding families and they have to protect the town from this beast 
and they have like individual like family powers that protect the town and this new girl is part of it but didn't know that and so is learning all about it as we are and I thought that was like really effectively done I thought it introduced us to the world really well I rated it three stars because I really enjoyed it I really enjoyed the creepy atmosphere it was very Stranger Things and I enjoyed the setting but I thought the ending was quite quick I was surprised to see it finish so quickly so I'm looking forward to reading the sequel to see like what's done because I think it was not left on a cliffhanger but left with enough that there would be a second book and oh, there were so many bisexual characters like I know that seems like a really niche thing but it wasn't just kind of like here's someone who's always liked guys and now she likes girls and that's it it was just like yeah I realized I was bisexual and that was it like it's just cool they happen to be bisexual and yeah I love it I love bisexual characters which is very weird to say but I just feel like we need to read more about them then I read On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden this was my graphic novel and I rated it four and a half stars maybe five stars I think four and a half stars it's just so good it's basically about a crew in space who go around fixing old and broken buildings and monuments and that story is kind of interspersed with this new girl on the ship called Mia who is looking back on her school days where she fell in love with this girl who suddenly disappeared and she's like missing her and then they go on a quest and it's really good. It's the first time I've appreciated a graphic novel for doing something that novels can't do. Up there. Here there are like six different scenes where it shows you like different landscapes and you could do that in a book but you'd have to describe it and I think being able to do it in a graphic novel in that sort of way is just so effective and I think it does it really well and the fact that it's like a full length graphic novel I painted the edges it was not done that badly um because it was a full-length novel I felt like I really got my money's worth out of it and I really appreciated it and the colors were so good the characters were amazing the characters were again casually gay and bi and non-binary and just everywhere <laughs> I just thought it was so good I just really enjoyed it and if you enjoyed books like A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet where it's character based and character driven you'd really enjoy this because again it's got like those relationships and nothing particularly happens well stuff does happen but like nothing big and dramatic happens and sometimes that's nice and I read this for the prompt to was this for a dark cover? I think this was for a dark cover for the pirate prompt. I again went off piece. Pirate prompt. I had no character that was a pirate. But there we go. The next one I finished was Son of the Shadows by Juliet Marillio. I was listening to this for over half the month because it doesn't look really big. It is really big. It's over 600 pages long and it was just oh, made me angry because it should have been really good and it could have been really good but I rated it two and a half stars because for the first 50% I like hated it because of the way that they spoke to the women like women were simply there as objects for the men like the women did not believe in this they did not like this kind of attitude but the men were treating them like they were objects like if they slept with someone they were like ah oh, you've given away this sacred thing and I'm like it's not sacred don't be treating them like that or you've slept with someone else you've taken what is mine and I'm like it's not bloody yours and <laughs> it just made me really angry how they were talking to the women and like they'd slap them and I'm like but it did get better in the second half or the third or third I can't remember which but <sighs> yeah admittedly the story was good there were some things oh I would put there were some things that surprised me and other things I predicted and enough things that still make me want to read the sequel, third one, Treacle, 
but I might suggest maybe I do a buddy read with someone or I have the audiobook I did listen to it as an audiobook and I think that's what got me through it because I don't know if I would have enjoyed it if I had to read 600 pages of patriarchy but if I was just listening to it I could just feel the tip whilst I was walking but yeah I would like to read the third book but I kind of need to step back and I don't like that it follows like a different generation every time they're kind of all born from their parents when the parents are quite young so they are still present but it does mean that the characters you grow to love aren't there again i don't know who these people are i mean i, I know who they should be but they don't look like they should be and i also think the cats you don't know yeah, I, I expected better things of this and it didn't work. And this I read for the prompt to continue a series, which was the like overlapping prompt between Courtier and Knight, which was really handy because then I could follow that for my additional character slash love interest for my princess. Then going back to the pirates, I read The Deep by River Solomon. I read this for the prompt to read a book featuring water because this was a short story kind of novella about a kind of species like mermaids but not mermaids they were called something else one jiru and they're basically born of the black slave women that were pregnant and thrown off the ships and when they die in the water they give birth to these mermaid kind of creatures and this species don't remember everything from their history they basically have a nominated historian who does all that remembering and we follow the mostly follow the kind of sometimes going a different paths but we follow this current historian who hates the task and feels like it's eating her up and it was a really interesting book and it was really well done considering it was only 176 pages long it just so effectively wrote a whole story in that time and it just it was amazing i have really come to appreciate writing in this month apparently it was a really interesting book concept as well really dark you've got to admit it's really dark and it discusses grief identity belonging community how it's concluded is well done it also has a bit of an lgbtq plus relationship but like not properly a relationship but kind of like a hint of one and yeah it's just such an interesting premise i'm so glad i read it and i think a lot of people read it this month but it was it was really good. It took me longer to read considering it was only less than 200 pages long but it was very well done and I really enjoyed it. It was, it was good. Next I read, listened to, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. I actually listened to the BBC radio adaptation so I don't know if it was an abridged one because it was only about an hour long. And because it was only about an hour long I feel like I didn't quite get into the story. I feel like I really appreciated the adaptation, I feel it was well done but I just don't think I listened to the whole story, I took in the whole story. I'm hesitant to rate it because it's an autobiography and it's a difficult autobiography to listen to because it's sad and it's heartbreaking and it deals with some difficult topics and because I feel like I didn't listen to it all I don't really want to rate it but it was it was a very well done book and it's a telling account of what it's like to be black as a child and what it's like to be black in those circumstances and what it's like to be a child in a difficult family dynamic and yeah it was very well done and the adaptation was very well done and yeah I read I know why the cage bird sings for I don't know what I read it for for another pirate one I think oh that was bargain book and I think I got that if it was bargain book I got it from the library if it was outsourced I got it from the library as well next I read Sandman Slim by Richard Cadry I rated this one four stars it's about a guy a human a magician who got sent to hell for 11 years and has finally made his way back up and has decided he's going to kill 
I mean, he's obviously angry at the guy who sent him to hell in the first place. And it was really interesting, actually. I had no idea what this was going to be about. I wouldn't have been able to tell you that before. I just knew that there was a magic battle because I read it for the prompt to read a magic battle. And it was really interesting. I thought the tone was really good. I thought it was very, well, I haven't read noir before, but Sam told me it was very noir. It was quite kind of sarcastic, a bit dry. The characters were all scummy. Even the people you thought were nice were had hidden motives. It kind of had very Christian kind of themes. It was a bit lucifer -y because everyone ends up in LA, apparently. Maybe it's, I don't think, no. Lucifer was based on Sam Man by Neil Gaiman, wasn't it? But ends up in LA and hell, devils, Christian, angels, heaven kind of thing. And it was interesting because you learn about it as you go along. And so I think going in with nothing meant I learned about it and I couldn't predict anything. And it was, it was fun. I didn't like the chapters, which is a really weird thing, but there were only like five or six chapters over 400 pages and some of them were like 200 pages long and I was like, I can't do this, I read by chapter chapter basis and it just really confused me. But once I got into it, I was just like, oh, I'll just read a couple of pages and it'll be fine. And once I got into that, it was good. And yeah, I read it quite quickly, well, relatively quickly and I enjoyed it. I don't know how much of a rush I will be to read the next ones but I wouldn't say no to reading the next ones, I'm just not in a rush to. The next one I read was, <laughs> this is squishing my head, I'm desperate not to take it off for the video. The next one I read was Ship of the Shadows by Maria Kutznia. I rated this one four and a half stars. I got an e-arc of this one from NetGalley. It doesn't come out until the 16th. Of July which I think is next week so probably by the time this is up I don't know. it's about a girl called Alea who lives in a Spanish town and really wants to be a pirate well not necessarily a pirate but wants to go adventuring but it's told because she's a girl she can't but then she finds a mysterious ship called the ship of shadows and they offer her the chance to go on the ship and she's like well at first she's like no because I'm with my family but then she accidentally ends up on the ship and goes on an adventure and it was really fun. I did read this one really quickly. I read this one for the prompt for a journey and I loved the journey they went on. I loved their adventure. I loved the magic in it. The magic system was, was really good. It was based on shadows and how it was done and how you didn't quite understand it was really cute and I loved the family in it. Well not the family, the crew they were like a giant family and they just accepted everyone and the fact that they were women wasn't really thought about it's just they were the best feared ship and crew and everyone had their place everyone had their job it's not like only the women could do this and that it was just like the women can do all of it and i loved it i would have loved to read this as a child or as a teen and so i'm glad they're being written about now the Last book I read physically was Ash by Melinda Lowe. Can you tell what prompt I read this for? I read it for the prompt to read a book with a foiled cover because the whole cover is foiled. This is a sapphic retelling of Cinderella where Ash finds herself living in her stepmother's house after both her parents have died and she's interested in magic and fairies and fairy tales and then she meets a huntress like the king's huntress and they form a friendship and then a romance but the romance is really really last minute I mean I knew it was coming but very slow burn and my head. I'm just gonna move it down put it there I've got a choker now choker that doesn't fit Yeah, it was a very slow burn romance. I've had this on my shelf for ages. In fact, I've probably had it since it came out. Well, maybe not since it came out. It came out in 2009, 2010. When, how old would I have been? 30. Maybe a bit later I got this, but I've had this for a long time and I wouldn't have known it was sapphic if I hadn't been told. And this wasn't like constantly on the sapphic books you should read. And so I just, I love the fact that 
Melinda Lowe, the author, has been writing LGBTQ plus romances before they were kind of accepted is the wrong word, but before they were mainstream is also the wrong word, but before they were more common. And I thought it was really well done. I thought it was an interesting retelling of Cinderella and the fairies in it kind of threw me. They didn't necessarily do a lot. But also I thought how the fairy godmother was incorporated was quite fun and surprised me. I rated it three stars. I don't think I said the third shiny. The next book I finished was The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I listened to this as an audiobook and it's about a girl called Star who witnesses her best friend being shot whilst he's unarmed in a car by a white police officer and the rest of the book is her pursuing justice for this guy and I got this before all the Black Lives Matter protests started happening I say that as if they haven't always been present and they haven't like stopped being like important but in June there were a lot of protests and so reading it became more important. I really wanted to read it, really wanted to educate myself. And I'm saying that again with kind of a hesitant saying because it's not a non-fiction. It is a fiction book, but it was so realistic. Like everything that happened was scary. It was frustrating, it was devastating because you see it still happen. And yeah, it was just so well done it was there was no happy ending as such and i was just it was frustrating to watch and frustrating to listen to and so realistic because there was a line about something about uh we don't get justice we get a hashtag and it's it's true like that's still happening and it's a real shame because black people are people as much as white people and we shouldn't be shunning their experience I think this should be required reading, not banned, because a lot of schools ban it. I read this for the prompt to read a five star prediction, so obviously I rated it five stars, I would have been surprised if I did. The last book I read was 10 Things My Cat Hates About You by Lottie Lucas. I read this for the prompt to read a book featuring an animal for the witch and I'm angry about this one. Not for the same reason as the last one, I'm angry about this one because I was so expecting it to be cute and fluffy and I hated it and I don't know if I rated it two and a half stars because it was bad or if I was disappointed. Basically it had this woman who based a lot of her relationships on, not necessarily based them, but judged a lot of relationships on her cat and her cat's reaction to them and then the cat pushes her in the way of two men and like she crosses paths with them and you're like which one she's gonna choose but you know which one she's going to choose from the get-go and love triangles and two potential love interests are fine if you don't know who she's going to end up with but you knew from the beginning and it's just it was it was frustrating because I wanted it to be so good and it wasn't and also both the potential love interests and the love of the woman were super attractive quirky kind of one was like conventionally attractive like look at him with his muscles and the other one was a bit geeky and then he took off his geeky shirt and you're like oh actually he's attractive too and i'm like there's more to people and then <sighs> conflict is necessary in a romance but conflict shouldn't be just insulting each other like because then you can't really come back from that if you've said all the worst things to each other you're forever going to be thinking, well, they could still be thinking that. And it wasn't just that that happened, but it was then that the author kind of made that to be a quirky part of the relationship. And I'm like, that is not quirky, that is abusive. And it made me angry. And I'm frustrated and I'm more angry because it could have been so good and it wasn't. <laughs> and also then they got together in the last 5%. And I think that's wrong. If you're making a romance, Make them be in that romance. Don't make me write the happy ending. My job as a reader is to read the romance, not to write it. The last book I read and didn't quite finish in June was It's Not About the Burqa by or edited by Marianne Khan. This is a collection of essays by Muslim feminists 
mostly British Muslim feminists, but there are some from America and around the world. And it was so, so interesting. It was eye opening to me as a not Muslim person and as someone who really hasn't had a lot of contact, if any, with people in the Muslim community, not for lack of trying, but just for lack of being around them. And it was giving women a voice because so often we hear about the Muslim women that they're being repressed, that they're being oppressed, that they're being told what to do, that their husband's faith, family is telling them what to do, but we never get to hear from them. So this collection of essays was allowing these women their choice. And it was just interesting and on so many topics I wouldn't normally think about. So there was feminism, mental health, marriage, storytelling, STEM, feminism, being a black Muslim and yeah they're just things I wouldn't normally think about and it was just really well done and it just shows the importance of intersectionality so not just being a feminist but being a feminist who accepts people of different races, different faiths, not just being a white feminist and I don't want to put this for a prompt one because I didn't finish it and two because I'm reading this to educate myself not to get more points and read on and also I don't want to rate this because it was so well done but rating non-fiction books that are educational almost feels like you're ranking them which is the point of a rating system but you shouldn't be ranking something like that because it implies that some are better at educating you which is sometimes true but yeah it's part of my attempt to read more books like this that educate me so yeah i read a lot of books in june here are the four physical ones i read if you enjoyed this please let me know down in the comments if you joined in if you read the books if you read these books in the past if you want to read any of them if you finished your path if you're just here to say hello say hello if you enjoyed it please consider giving it a like subscribe if you're not already and i will see you in the next video bye